Welcome to today's worship experience live from Siege Church, where we believe in building strong Christian families, developing leaders, and we know there is greatness on the inside of you. We pray that your family is safe and healthy during this time. We welcome you from all over the world. Drop us a comment from where you're viewing from. Now, come into the sanctuary as we go into this worship experience by our praise team and hear a powerful word from God by our pastor, Jerome L. Lewis. Get ready for a Whopper Chunk blessing today. I know they both in the same bird family, but there's a distinction between an eagle and a chicken. Chicken will eat anything. I ain't gonna mess you up, so I'll let that go. But <laughs> you be fasting eating up my vegetables, bro. There's a distinction in quality. It's not cheap or mediocre. Do you know mediocre means low quality? Average, common, the Latin root word for, for mediocre comes from the word middle. Middle, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Neither up or down, just somewhere in the middle. When I thought of this word mediocre, I thought of lukewarm. One definition of the word mediocre is so-so. How was the food? So-so. Wasn't good, wasn't bad, just so-so. Would you buy clothes that are so-so? Would you date a guy who's so-so? Would you date a girl who's so-so? Mediocre? One definition means not very good. Not very good. The opposite of mediocre is extraordinary. Look at your, look at your neighbor and say, you, you, you look extraordinary. Yeah, they want to go home with you now, see? The opposite of mediocre is extraordinary. It also means uncommon and superior. Uncommon and superior. God's calling us to raise the standard, man. To have a spirit of excellence. Write this down. Excellence is not accidental. Excellence is not accidental. It's intentional. Greatness is not automatic. But you can achieve it by being intentional. Can you say amen to this? Excellence exceeds the normal way people walk. Excellence exceeds the normal way people talk. Excellence exceeds the normal way people behave. It's a whole nother standard. It's living life on a whole different level. You can tell when a person is a person of excellence. They come in and, and their stuff looks sharp. They don't look like they just got it out of the hamper with wrinkles all over it. Their pants are nice and creased when you got excellence about you. Your hair is done a certain way. When there's a degree of excellence about you, you walk a certain way. Your pants ain't hanging off your butt so we can see your drawers uh, when you walk in excellence. I'm talking about a standard of excellence. And sometimes we accept, we, accept, uh, we accept mediocrity in our families, with our kids. Listen, we can't go out there and change other people's kids, but we can do something about our own. When they leave the house, I remember, man, growing up as a kid, my mom would put Vaseline on us. Because she didn't want us all crusty, you understand? Want your lips all cracking and everything, you know? And when she ran out of Vaseline, (laughs) 
she used this white stuff called lard. It was cooking grease, man. I'm glad she didn't do that in the summertime because a brother would have tanned up like chocolate cookie, man. But I mean, she, would, she made sure that our hands were wiped in it and, you know, put it on your face. And, you know, you walked out shining like somebody put a light on you. And, but my point is, and that is that she didn't want us to look crusty. Look at your neighbor. Make sure they ain't crusty. <clears throat> I'm talking about excellence. I'm talking about excellence. Listen, when we were coming up, there was something that our parents instilled in us that from, listen. Before you walked out the door, before TSA, mom and pop looked at us from toe to head, made sure we had a belt on, made sure our feet were clean, made sure our hair, if we had any, was right, and made sure, first thing they asked, did you brush your teeth? I mean, there was a standard. You understand what I'm saying to you? There was a standard of excellence so that when you stepped out, now, here's the thing. You know and I know there were certain families that people knew. That's, that's Randy and Darcy's kids right there. That's so-and-so's kids right there. Look at them. Look at, look at, look at that. Look at that outfit. Look at that misfit. <laughs> but you, there was a standard. And people of God, God has a standard for his family. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God has a standard for his family. And we think that God is just going to take every little thing that people offer him. And good old God is just going to accept everything. I'm here to tell you, everything that comes to the gate ain't getting in. God has a standard for us. Can you say amen to that? And we've got to live by it. Having a standard of excellence is not being perfect. You're not trying to be perfect. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Having a standard of excellence is not being perfect. It's not competing with other people. Having a standard of excellence is not trying to be rude. You're just living by a different standard. A spirit of excellence makes you a peacemaker and not a troublemaker. You will find in the church that there are people who are notorious for being troublemakers. I hate to say that, but I just want you to be aware when you run into them, don't leave the church because they're troublemakers. Just learn who they are. When, you're, when your spirit of excellence is on you, it makes you a peacemaker and not a troublemaker. When the spirit of excellence is on you, it makes you a finisher and not just a starter. When the spirit of excellence is on you, it makes you a complimenter and not a criticizer. When the spirit of excellence is on you, it makes you an encourager and not a destroyer of other people's character. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? When the spirit of excellence is on you, this is a big one. When the spirit of excellence is on you, it makes you cover my fault and not expose them. It makes you cover my faults and not expose them. Please hear me. I did not say condone it, and I did not say accept it. You cover me. If you love me, you cover me. Can you say amen to this? Look at 1 Peter 4.8 in the, in the uh, Amplified Classic. 1 Peter 4.8 in the Amplified Classic. Turn to your neighbor and say, cover me. Cover Come on, tell them again, cover me. cover me. When you're a person of excellence, you cover people's faults. You don't expose them on Facebook and you don't put them on Instagram. First Peter 4.8, somebody shout, cover me. 1 Peter 4, 8 in the Amplified Classic. Amplified Classic. 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all things, have intense and unfailing love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sin, forgives 
and disregards the faults of others. Covers. Covers. Turn to your neighbor and say, cover me. Look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. I'm going to read from the King James, the Message Bible, and the Passion. I want you to get this because if you're a person of excellence, you, you, you cover my faults. You don't condone it, you don't accept it, but you cover it. And when you cover it, that means you keep your mouth closed on my issue. I said, you keep your mouth closed on my issue. You are not the Holy Ghost police. This is not the airport. You see something, say something. That ain't the, this ain't what God says in his kingdom. He says, you cover me. <laughs> cover me. See, your stuff just ain't got put on the news yet. <laughs> okay. Proverbs 10, 12 in the King James. This scripture man had me in tears yesterday because it answered some questions for me. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all, somebody say all, all, all sin. See, this is where you know who your true friends are. This is a friend distinguisher. People say they're your friends and they try and expose you. You gave them the wrong tag. It shouldn't be a friend tag. Take it back. They don't get a golden ticket. <laughs> Hatred stirs up strife. But love does what? A person of excellence. An excellent spirit covers faults. Listen to what it says in the Message Bible. The Message Bible. Hatred starts fights but love pulls a quilt over the bickering love does what boy listen to the passion translation the passion translation of this <laughs> Jesus hatred keeps old quarrels alive I want that to sink in a little bit. Because when you come around people you call your friends and they bring up old stuff to start new fights, there's something underlying under the surface that you're not getting. Notice what it says? Hatred keeps old, somebody say old, old quarrels alive. But love draws a veil over every insult and finds a way to make sin disappear. Thank God for the blood of Jesus, man. What is hatred? What is hatred and what does it mean to hate? And this might seem obvious to you, but this is serious. I said this is serious. Hatred is intense hostility from anger over past injuries or offense. Over past injuries or offense. It's a feeling of jealousy over what someone else has. Let me give you four reasons why people hate. Four reasons why people hate. And I'm giving you these things because we need to guard our heart and not let it show up in our lives. Hate is dangerous, man. Hate stirs up strife. Hate keeps old quarrels alive. Four reasons why people hate. They want to be you. <laughs> 
Some people hate you because they want to be you. Number two, why people hate is because they don't even like themselves. They don't even like themselves. Some people don't like themselves, so it's going to be hard for them to like you. The Bible talks about how can you love your neighbor if you don't even love yourself. The first person you need to love is God. Then the second person you need to love is yourself. Number one, they want to be you. Number two, they dislike themselves. Number three, they see you as a threat. They see you as a threat. Number four, they have their own personal insecurities. Here's a scripture reference you can write down. Luke 6, 27, 28. The just of those two scriptures is <laughs> do good to them who hate you. Now, I know you want to slap them. I know you want to avoid them. I know you want to match their energy. But the Bible says when someone hates you, dislikes you, and I know you might be experiencing this on your job because people want what you want, want what you have. They don't like the very fact that you're happy. <laughs> Some people don't like the fact that you're happy. Some people don't like the fact that your kids like you. Because their kids don't like them. The Bible says do good to them which hate you. Can you say amen to this? Amen. A person with a spirit of excellence lives by a different standard. Proverbs 17, 27. Can you handle a little bit more? Proverbs 20, 27. Talking about a spirit of excellence. Proverbs, what did I say? No, 1727. <laughs> 1727. In that year, no, I'm just kidding. Proverbs 1727. <clears throat> listen to this, listen to this. In the King James. And then we're going to read it in the message, the, the Passion and Translation. Sometimes people say, why do you read all the different translations? Because I want you to get it. When you walk out of here, I don't want you to have to ever read between the lines or try to figure out what I'm saying. But look what it says here in, in Proverbs 17, 27. He that hath knowledge spares his words. A man of understanding is of what? He that hath knowledge spares his word. A man of understanding. A man submitted to God's point of view is of an excellent spirit. Listen to what the Message Bible says. The Message Translation. After that, the Passion and then the Amplified. But listen to what the Message Bible says. The one who knows much says little. Boy, that's a lesson to learn, ain't it? People doing a whole lot of talking, they don't know nothing. James Brown used to say, talk it loud. <laughs> yeah, saying nothing. The one who knows much says little. A man, an understanding person does what? Remains calm. Remains calm. Look at your neighbor and show them. Say, this is what calm looks like. Yeah. Listen to what the Passion Bible says. I'm talking about a spirit of excellence. Can you bridle your tongue when your heart is under pressure? Can you bridle your tongue when your heart is under pressure? That's how you show that you are wise. See, when you get on the press, you start running off at the mouth. The Bible calls that being a fool. A fool. Can you bridle your tongue when your heart is under pressure? That's how you show that you're wise. An understanding heart, get this, an understanding heart keeps you cool, calm, and collected no matter what you're facing. 
This is a good scripture, man. When you're going through things this week and the pressure's on you and everything's coming at you from all these different sides, learn to keep your mouth closed and keep your peace. The, doesn't the Bible say, hold your peace? One of the ways you hold your peace is by holding your tongue. You don't have to speak and respond to everything people say to you. Sometimes it's just best to keep your mouth closed. Sometimes do you understand that people are saying things to you, trying to bait you on, trying to ignite a flame in you? Sometimes people will throw bait out to you and see if you're going to grab a hold of it. Sometimes it can be your husband. Sometimes it can be your wife. Sometimes it can be your kids. You tell your kids to turn the cell phone off, and they say, no, this is my fault. See, some of you just, 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 see, see. See, your response right now causing your kids. See, see, you can't respond to that. Back in the day, they would be up on the wall, but nowadays you're different. No, it's got to be different now. You can't respond to that. If you respond to that, you'll get what you want, but you'll lose your child. See, the very thing you hated that your parents did to you, you're now doing the same thing to your kids. Now you ain't saying nothing. Before you go, oh, 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 oh. Now, you, now you're looking in the mirror. You're thinking, oh, oh, oh. No, the very thing that you hated that your parents did to you, why respond and do the same thing to your children? See, that's called generational pattern. It's not a curse. It's a behavior pattern that you can change. I know some of you still thinking, I don't agree, not in my house. Mm, that's why your house empty. Can you bridle your tongue when you're under pressure? See, this is not just in church and on the job, it's in your house. You don't just get pressure on the job, do you? Don't, how many of you get pressure in the house? Can I see your hand? Some of you ain't going to raise your hand because first set beside the person who calls the pressure. So you ain't going to raise your hand at all. You're like, How many of you have had pressure in your home? Okay, we all have. We all have. During those times in the house is where you develop that spirit of excellence and keep your mouth closed. You don't always have to respond immediately. Sometimes your spouse is trying to bait you. Lisa's not here, so you don't have to look over there. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, Whoa. Now, you understand, sometimes people are intentional about saying and doing things to bait you. And you have to be wise and not be baited along. Notice it says, can you brighter your tongue when you're under pressure? Look at your neighbor, ask them that question. Can you keep your mouth closed when you're under pressure? Ask them that. Can you keep your mouth closed when you're under pressure? <laughs> Appreciate your honesty. You know what everybody says in church? You know what everybody says in church? Yes. I've been preaching for three weeks, be honest. I like the Amplified Classic, and I think I'll have to stop with this. Amplified Classic says this. He who has knowledge spares his words. See, this next part of this verse is describing me. Look in the Bible, look in there. I want you to see it. A man of understanding has a cool spirit. Don't show any hatred. <laughs> a man of understanding. See, when you understand your purpose, stuff don't bother you. You understand? See, the enemy's trying to get you off of your purpose. He's trying to get you off of your assignment. 
And when the Bible says that we're not ignorant of the devil's devices, when you know the devil's devices and how he comes at you, you just stay cool under pressure. And people can't figure out how is it that you go through all of what you're going through and you're still cool about it? How is it that all of these are coming at you and you're still calm about it? It's not that you don't care. It's not that it's not on your heart. But you realize that if God don't handle this, it can't be done. So ain't no use me carrying this. It's no use me carrying it. And that's where you have to be cool about it. We, people ask you, how you doing? I'm cool. Sometimes that's the answer you give them. You don't have to say, well, listen, I was throwing up all last night. My corns is hurting really on my left foot really bad. Milk with sorrow and materials. I didn't get no coffee. No, man. We understand you're going through things. You're facing challenges. But what better scriptural answer can you give people? How you doing? I'm cool. Let's, let, let's practice. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm cool. But listen, listen, listen. You got to do it like this to have the impact. I'm cool. Okay. I'm cool. Won't you stand with me? Won't you stand with me? How you doing, people? Okay, let's work on this now. How you doing, people? You ain't doing it. I'm cool. Okay. I'd rather you be cool than act like a fool. So when you get under pressure and things happen around you, you might hear some things this week that kind of try to get you off kilter. People might say some things intentionally just to see how you respond. They might point their finger in your face and call you everything. Listen, you already acted wrong. You just acted wrong. But you're like, whoo, whoo, whoo. No, you both say, I'm cool. I'm cool. See, you got to be cool about being cool. I didn't say be cold. Here's the difference. I didn't say be cold, because cold is like ignoring people. Just had an argument with your spouse and said, what are we going to do about this? Smile and said, baby, I'm cool. How are you doing? <laughs> so how y'all doing today? See, some of y'all got it. I'm cool. You even got to change the octave on your voice. I'm cool. <laughs> Let me pray over you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for a cool congregation. I'm so glad, Father, they're not cold. But they're cool. Because they want a spirit of excellence. That, Father, pressure will not break them. Problems will not shake them. 